ti ddim i'r siop, mi e si adre.
back in the forest. Da yarn. Golfing. Welcome to Snowdonia. This is a three day adventure, two nights and two new summits for me, all being well. I'm in the Rinogev again. I'm going to be climbing the Rinogvach today. Staying up near Rinogvach tonight and then tomorrow making my way over to E. Letha. If you saw my last video, Alone in the Badlands, that was shot at Rinog Vaud. So today I'm going to take on the next two summits. This is the Rinogev. It's southern Snowdonia, sort of southwest, a few miles east of the coast, east of Harlech. It's a quiet part of Snowdonia. So if you see Snowdonia as, if you see Snowdon as being the busy part, Snowdon, we've all seen those absolute scenes of queues of people trying to summit. That's busy. You get that wider area there of Ikluad and Kribgok. That's moderately busy, fairly busy on a nice summer day. You then have the quieter areas of the Glidders and the Karnadai. And then you have down here, which is very quiet. That last trip out, Rinogvar, with the Alone in the Badlands video, two days, I didn't see a single person. So I'm hoping this one's as quiet. Little three day, two new summits, and uh, the weather is good. Clear blue skies at the moment. Let's get going. First up, we have a couple of miles hike through some woodland. Nice little shot in the distance here. We have Rinogvar on the right and Rinogvach on the left. So we're heading that way through the woods. The going is pretty tough. I've parked up on the eastern side of Rinogvar in the forest there. And this stuff is just thick, heavy, broken tree leaves broken tree branches, this thick moss, heather combination that nobody's walked on in years, if ever. And uh, maybe there was a path somewhere, but I've missed it. So we've got another mile or so that way. The weather is too good. It's hot. I put a thermal shirt on under this and I've got my line trousers. And I didn't need them. I've already got a sweat on. It's going to be a long mile or two before we even get to the foot of Rinogvach. This is terrible. Off camera just. I'm walking through this. It's a swamp. It's just swampland. Clever clogs over here. Decided it'd take a fuck here now. Decided it'd take a shortcut. And I keep stepping into big bogs. Woo! <laughs> oh man. This is ridiculous. Don't take shortcuts. Stick to the map. The road is 50 meters away. There's a river running down this way from the mountains. And this is some kind of area that's been logged in the past. Part of the forest. It's just swamp. So I'm looking for these high bits to try and tread on. But if you misjudge one, woof, straight up to your knees. At least I'm gonna dry today. All right, let's find this road that way. Oh man, I've made some mistakes. That hike in, but that's one of the best. Blimey. I saved a mile in distance and probably added an hour in time and some soaking wet legs and feet for my efforts. 
Nice. I'm back on the the logging road, which I should have stayed on from the start. I'm gonna walk up here for half a mile, take a left, and then it's another half a mile or so to the foot of Rinogvach. At some point, I'm gonna take my socks off and dry them out. Maybe find a stream and get all the mud off. That swamp was is so still. The water is stinking, and now I'm stinking. And uh, anyway, whatever. Good start. Nice to be out. Sun shining. Can't complain really. All right. Saw my feet out. We'll crack on. Really quite surprised how dry it is. I'm not that familiar with this part of Snowdonia, but it's the end of March, and I would say that's pretty unusual. It's been a wet and wild February as well, and now we've got a, a week of good weather, high pressure, low winds, which is why I'm here. But I really think this is quite unusual. So I've walked up from the forest all the way up Bolch Drus, which I think means door valley or valley door something, until I hit a stone wall and then I took a left and I've dropped down into the bottom of the valley here and I have Rinnog back straight in front of me. So that's the next step. I'm drying everything out taking a break, enjoying the last few minutes of sunshine because the climb up to Rinagvach is all in the shade, which is going to be quite welcome to be honest because I've had enough of this now. But it's nice drying my feet out, drying my socks out and drying my boots. I'll show you on the map, come here. We started out here, this car park on the edge of the forest, the eastern edge of the forest that is east of Rinagvar. It's marked as, or near, Nanti Greg D, parking just there. From there, I tried to head directly southwest, got caught up in that swampland, ended up picking up one of these roads for the logging vehicles and made my way to here. This is Bolch Drus Adudwi, Adidwi. Walked up there until I hit a cairn and a stone wall and took a left and I've dropped down a little bit to just here. We're at about 350 metres. Rinogvac is about almost a kilometre to my south that way, but at 712 metres. So we have a good 360 metres of climbing to do. It's just gone 11 o'clock. And um, I'm going to take it easy, I'm going to have a nice walk up in the shade, make it up here, sort of early afternoon, um, do a bit of photography and set up camp on Rinog Vac. And we'll have uh, sunset and the night up here tonight. Day two tomorrow, we're going to head down south, descending Rinog Vac. One of these Lins here, Lin Perfedai, Lin Huel, Lin Ibai. We're going to try and get water from one of these tomorrow. I haven't brought enough water with me for a multi-day camp. So these will be fine. There'll be plenty of streams around here because E. Sletha is here. And these mountains drop down about um, 200 metres or so in this, into this valley here where these things are. E. is at 756 metres. The Rinog Vak is at 712. And then they drop down to sort of 480 in this little valley. There's a little bit of a ridge here, so we don't lose too much ground, but that'll be day two, dropping down that valley and then back up to Isletha, all being well. It'll be a, another sunset camp on the summit of here. And then day three is gonna be dropping down to the east somewhere, I'm not exactly sure. We'll see the lay of the ground from there tomorrow night and then head back to the woods into the car on day three. 
For now, I'm going to finish drying my socks and then we're going to head that way. I really quite like this ground. Nice grassy part of Snowdonia and places. Big difference to the glitters and Snowdon. It's rocky, but there's also a lot of grass. It's quite nice to walk around barefoot. I've been struggling with uh, shin splints. I've been doing a quit running years ago. I haven't run for years. And then at the start of March, I decided to give uh, dieting and running another go. I did 20 days. I lost a stone and a half, believe it or not. And um, I gave myself shin splints for my troubles. So I've had a few days rest and then hit the mountains. And so far, so good. I've done a few miles and I feel okay. Got a bit of pain on the inside, on the lower inside of my left shin. But other than that, feeling good so far. We've got 350 meters plus of vertical to do in brand new boots. Had some black leather winter boots for many years. And I thought this is going to be a dry one, so I'll get myself some new boots. These were 30 quid from Sports Direct and apparently waterproof. Although, as you saw within the first half an hour of being out in them, I submerged myself up to my waist in water, so they're pretty wet right now. But so far, no rubbing, and I'm pretty happy with them. They're nice and light. So, um, as nice as it is to sit around, onwards and upwards. Same old thing in the Rinagev. There's a path on the map, but damned if I can find it. The best way is often to just pick a direction and scramble up. It's so quiet around here. Not very much foot traffic. Uh, any path with the best wind in the world becomes fairly obscure and it's difficult to find even in the best of weather so you can imagine what it's like in the the fog and the mist so i tend to just pick a direction and go with it not too bad makes it more interesting i think as well sometimes when you've got a defined path and you can see it winding on and on into the distance and it becomes quite boring it's easy for your head to go down and to feel a little bit boring, to feel a little bit tiresome. When it's like this, it's challenging. You've always got to be wary of mistakes because the drops can be quite significant and it just keeps it interesting, but tiring. Must be about 100 meters into that 350. Just reached a full summit that I was aware of from the map. It looks like there's another one in 50 to 100 meters. And then the final push for the summit. A couple of little plateaus on the way up there. And the first sign of the summit of Rinogvach. This is the summit of Rinogvach. What a day. Views are incredible. A little bit of haze maybe, but uh, I'm not worried about that. It might clear up, or maybe it'll produce a bit of low mist overnight. Here's to hoping, that would be nice. Last time I was up here, I was on Rurinagvard, over that way. That's that rugged, stony looking peak. That's the Badlands over that way. That video was called Alone in the Badlands. And you can see a real difference here with um, Rinogvar and the Badlands and then onwards Snowdon is behind and the Glidders are behind. And it's really rugged and rocky. And then in the gap between Var and Vak, it almost changes and this is grasslands. So this side is rock and rubble and then brown dying dead grass. Again, weirdly for March, I think. Uh, heather and grass, and then this way over at E. Leather, where I'm going tomorrow. This looks like uh, grassland as well. Rocky on this face, it's going to be a steep climb, and then a grassy plateau on the top for tomorrow evening. Slin down there, looking nice in the sunshine. Over here is the Welsh coast. This summit here, I've just looked on the map, it's called uh, Molvri, I think you'd pronounce it. Molvri. 
the anglicised version might be. But this looks a really nice summit, one I'll put on the list. It's really close to the coast, a lot of prominence, could have some real nice sunset views over there. This is Harlech over here, Welsh coastal town, a bit further up, Port Madag. Over this way is um, the valley where I came from. You can just see the corner of where I parked down there. That's the forest where I parked. And look at this wall. It's amazing that they build these all the way up here. I can barely get myself up here with my 20 kilo Bergen. But this wall's been built many years ago. Very cool. All right, it's about 2.30 in the afternoon. I'm gonna just chill out for a little bit, take on some water. I might do a coffee, take some uh, telephoto video shots of all these distant places when the sun comes down a little bit more and look for a camping spot. There's no wind, very little wind today. Very little wind overnight, it's forecast. So I'm going to do a summit camp somewhere up here. There's a few grassy areas, although it looks quite rocky. Maybe a bit over that way. Or I might drop down a few meters down this face and um, see what I can find. It'd be nice to have a view of the lakes. I quite like looking at the lakes. Sunset is over this way, so that'll be nice. Sunrise, I think, is over there somewhere. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna chill out for a bit and catch up with you later on. This is gonna be the camping spot. If I can be bothered to set the tent up. Gonna have sunset that way. It's got lovely views. And then sunrise, we're gonna have views too. There aren't many spots to choose from that are covered in grass and relatively flat. I narrowed it down to two and paced around the summit for an hour trying to decide which one to go for and I've gone with this one. The other one was on that eastern side and it's a nice spot. It's nice because it's sheltered, it's on the, the other side, the wind's coming from the west. But I've looked on the Met Office and the wind speeds shouldn't be above 15 mile per hour gusts. So I'm going to go with uh, the views. I'm going to go with views over comfort. It'll just mean that we'll probably have a constant wind through the night. Might make cooking a little difficult. But um, sunset and sunrise is the priority. I'm not here for comfort. I'm here for get some cracking views. So I'm going to nod off for... Uh, half an hour or so, and then uh, get the tent up. It's hard to describe how good that felt. All right, let's get the tent up. Hello. I don't think I've ever done this before. Have a look around my tent. Everybody else does it, so I thought I may as well do the same. I don't have much, and I'm pretty... I feel like I'm pretty OCD organisation-wise. But I have some pretty cheap camping gear. This is a MXR Elixir 3 tent. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with it, to be honest. I'm never going to go out and spend the money on a fancy Hilleberg or whatever the others are called. This was a couple of hundred quid, which is a lot for a tent in my opinion. It's been fine. I don't like going out in strong winds. don't particularly like going out in the cold and the wet and the snow. But when I have done, it's been absolutely fine. What I quite like to do is rig the side into wind, which is that way, firmly down to the ground, leaving not much gap. It keeps the wind out. I'm going to keep the tension in the top cover by pulling back on this side. Uh, it's done a great job. I've had no problems with it. I took the kids out in it recently. We had about 30, 40 mile per hour gusts and it was absolutely fine. So I have a cheap sleeping system. This is a cheap old mountain warehouse pad. A cheap, or well, fairly cheap, I think it's about 50 quid mountain warehouse sleeping bag. Have you noticed the theme yet? cheap. 
uh, cheap, very cheap travel pillow. And then all the money goes on camera gear, as someone's pointed out in my videos before. I've got a drone, it's a Mavic 2 Pro, the Hasselblad version, and it's pretty good. I've got quite a few drones. This one's good because it's fairly good quality for the size of it, but it's because of the new rules, it's difficult to fly in cities, so it's great to bring it places like this and put it to its full use or almost full use. It's got a load of stuff on there you don't need for mountains, obstacle avoidance and stuff, but uh, produces a good image, shoots uh, 4K HDR, HLG. The controller's there with my phone attached, all set up, ready to go. Because you never know when the weather might turn. Sunrise and sunset, you don't get much time in reality. If you're trying to use a, a mirrorless camera and a drone, changing lenses, you don't get much time, so just leave it all set up, ready to go. Have a few spare batteries for it. This is a drone battery for the Mavic. And I have these little adapters, which give power out on USB. So when you've used a battery, like this one that I've used today, you run them down to 20 or 30% on the drone, and then you can use that for charging whatever. I've got an assortment of cables, I can use it for charging my phone, the drone controller, my camera battery, the GoPro, various other little bits. The GoPro is, it's a very old GoPro, but it's fairly new for me to bring it out. I never take it out anywhere. The only place I use it is by sticking it in weird and wacky places usually, onto cars or whatever else. But I thought I'd bring it along on this one. I put it on a small little tripod. And I've seen people using the night lapse mode with pretty good success. So I'm gonna give that a go. I usually do that on the camera I'm using now, the Sony, but we'll give that a while. Little rocket blower, essential for getting the dust off your lens. Two lenses, the 50mm 1.4, so the tent sequences are shot with this usually and not much else other than astrophotography uh, f1.4 it's bloody good it lets a lot of light in it's huge and um, produces a really good image at 50 mil for astro it's not the greatest thing you know you want a big wide lens most of the time but uh i have a bit of fun with that and then i have a 70 to 200 mil Sony F4 telephoto. Uh, I just like carrying this one around. I have longer lenses, but this is a nice little size. And um, a lot of the tighter shots that you're gonna see in the video will be shot with that. Not much else. Gloves, keep those handy, you never know. Buffalo jacket, so this is what I'll just walk around camping on night. Bloody good, keep you warm gets cold in this cheap sleeping bag I often sleep in it there's a hood for that these hoods are extra that's a Buffalo special six jacket and these hoods uh, like extreme cold weather stuff which I'm not going to need I quite like to carry it around you always use it as a bit of an extra bit of padding for your pillow a basic woolly hat head torch USB charged so I can charge it off my battery. Um, toothpaste, toothbrush, gotta use that, obviously. Don't be a minger. Jet boil, this is my cooking system. Boiling water, I like a coffee. Comes with a little frying pan adapter. This is the official frying pan adapter. Just stops on the top there, but I don't have the official pan. I use a, you guessed it, cheaper pan for frying up my dinner. Dinner tonight is in this bag outside in the sun warming up. So I've packed, I'm on a bit of a funny diet this month. I've eaten nothing but meat for the whole of March. I'm gonna do that for a whole month. I have the occasional, very occasional piece of fruit. I had a pear earlier and I've got an apple for tomorrow. It's my little treat. But other than that, I had a special little surprise for if I managed to get to the top of Leffa tomorrow. But other than that, nothing but meat. So I've put meat in bags like this, frozen them up at home. And this is tonight's dinner. It's a couple of steaks and a couple of lamb's liver slices. How appealing does that look? 
I cook that up. It's thawing out in the sun at the moment. I cook that up in a bit of butter, which is in a separate one of these. My Bergen, water, me, that's it. It's everything. Just, uh, yeah, that's it. Run out of things to say. I'm just gonna chill out. The sun's still a little bit too high for the best shots. So I'm gonna potter around, talk bollocks, and um, wait for a bit closer to sunset. I just want to show you this view while I'm waiting for sunset. Didn't notice when I pitched the tent, but if you walk, uh, I don't know, 25, 30 meters from the tent, you come to a cliff edge. I should have checked this out first, really. No, it's perfectly safe, but you come to a cliff edge this way, and then look at this view. Beautiful. This is Llyn Hewel. I think it's pronounced and Llyn Pervedai and Llyni B or Llyni Bai. So three Llyns. The route over to Eithletha tomorrow is really simple. It's just down here. We'll stop off at one of these Llyns, maybe this one whichever one to be honest, we'll try and find a stream running down the side of the mountain here and then up to Ixletha and somewhere on top. Ixletha means slope in Welsh uh, and you can see how it gets that name. It's a real sheer cliff face on this side and then it just slopes off into the distance over the back over to Mulvery looking pretty good in this evening light. I just wanted to show you that view, I thought it was bloody cool. And the tent is just up there. All right, let's give this a go. Time lapse. Five seconds. Uh, time warp, time lapse video, time lapse photo, night lapse. Time lapse photo. We're going to do sunset every 30 seconds. We're going to shoot raw, white balance, 5-5. Five, five. We're going to warm that up to 6-5. Wide. Or or linear. I'll shoot wide. Right, let's give this a go. If anyone has any tips, send them my way. I'm going to try and get first sunset time lapse on the GoPro. Just stop it moving. All being well. Can't be too sure. A little gust of wind can ruin your shot. Okay. And um, off we go. 30 seconds wide. 30 seconds every shot. That's two shots a minute. That's 120 shots per second per hour. If I leave this on for a couple of hours, it should give me 10 seconds. Okay, let's go with that. And that's it, easy. It doesn't get much better than that, does it? Cracking sunset. I've got a lot of faith in this little guy. He's had the best opportunity to pull off an awesome time lapse on his first go. Let's see what it comes out with. Right, I'm going to enjoy this, maybe a bit of astro in the night, otherwise, see you tomorrow.
Good morning. Lovely night. Just woke up and I'm getting set up for sunrise. Absolutely fantastic out here last night. Not a breath of wind, not one, just completely still. We're at over 700 meters and it was completely still, which is always good. Unusual. The moon just setting over there and sunrise. Look at that. I'm watching a, a crow or a blackbird. It's got to be a good mile away over the back of the leather. You probably just about hear it now. Silent. So quiet. Beautiful. Right, I'm gonna get some shots of sunrise. Now that is an amazing view. So I've got the whole place to myself again. The Rinagev living up to its quiet name. I've seen no one at all up here. Day two. But what a view. That's Snowden in the distance. Snowden Mountain. Eruwifta. In the far distance, you probably won't see it on this lens. This is the summit stones of Rinagvak. That ridge there in the light is Rinagvar. And then in the far distance, there's a layer of mist. And you can see the summit of Snowdon just peeking over the top. Absolutely lovely. Washed out, murky shot with this nice clear foreground. Beautiful. I'll stick the big lens on and we'll try and get a decent photo. That'll be on Instagram for anyone interested. I'm currently here. It's AM on day two. I'm on the summit of Urinogvach. And I'm going to head down this way up E. Letha. First thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to drop down to the right. Let me orientate this map a little bit better. I'm going to drop down from Rinogvak summit, head right to Llyn Huel, or Huwel, and try and find some drinking water. I'm at Llyn Huel and it's dead calm, still no wind, no streams. I don't quite like the look of the water, There's just something about it. Pretty happy with streams, especially in the rocky peaks of Snowdonia, usually pretty good. Just boil it off and it's not a problem. But this is just too still for me. There's a lot of green on the rocks submerged. There's uh, a few critters around. I just found the skull, or the bottom jaw of one of them. There's not many sheep around. There are no cows, which is good. But I'm gonna chlorinate this water anyway. It looks pretty clear. But um, I don't know. I get a funny feeling about it. These chlorine tablets are pretty good. They're nasty. They taste terrible. It's just one of these per one litre of water. They're old, old school. I know there's better ways of doing it nowadays, but um, this is pretty safe way of doing it. Two of those in two litres of water. Give it 30 minutes and that's good to drink. To be extra sure, you can always boil it off as well, which I quite like to do. These just leave my first aid kit. 
with the emergency coffee bag. I just carry in uh, a couple of bandages, a whistle, in case I break my leg on the slopes, I'm trying to get someone's attention. A few plasters and some antiseptic wipes. So I'll leave them in there for 30 minutes, well, for a couple of hours probably, because I'm going to go up to the uh, Schleffer next, which is that way. It's a bit annoying because if I do find a stream, uh, I think the stream is over that way. Although the weather's been so good, I expect it's going to be quite dry. Water tends to seep out of the mountains for a good few days, maybe even a few weeks after a good rainfall. But it's been, I don't know, must have been a week or so and everything's so dry. I wouldn't be surprised if that stream's dry. But um, yeah, it's a bit annoying because if I do find the stream, I'll get fresh water but I have to throw this away, which is four litres and four kilos of weight. I'm about to carry up that 750 metre mountain. But oh well, I need the exercise. I've just come from here. So that was day one's camp spot at the top of there. It looks pretty cool from down here. That's Urinag Vach. Looks very steep. My tent was just uh, 25 metres or so over that ledge of that cliff. So yesterday when we came and had a look at the view, we were looking directly down here. Alright, I'm gonna get going. E Sletha. Oh yes baby. This is gonna be fantastic. Oh I'm about halfway up the side of the Sletha and it's just about to get steep. Up until now the path has been rocky, stepped, a few plateaus and now it gets steep, it's almost a mud zigzag, I don't know how steep it looks on the camera but it's going to be difficult, I'm feeling the tiredness, um, yeah no carbs all month other than the odd piece of fruit, so I'm bloody looking forward to this. Look at the view! I've never, or maybe a better way to say it is, I've always kind of underestimated the Rinagev and Rinagvach has never really been on my radar. It's the small Rinag. So people are naturally drawn, or I'm naturally drawn to Var, the big Rinag. But it's bloody good, look at that, it's impressive. Nice divined rugged peak over a lake. What more could you want? An apple. Almost there. For anyone interested in a camping spot, I can highly recommend a spot I've just walked past. The grass just down there. It's a grass ledge, maybe 10 meters wide. It's about 50 meters from the summit flat, very few rocks, and look at that view. You'd have sunset on the left hand side over the sea. Might just catch a bit of sunrise, maybe it'll be obscured behind this leather end of the ridge. But beautiful spot. I was just thinking to myself that if I go to the top and it's too windy, I haven't checked the forecast today, but if it's too windy, I can always drop back down and take advantage of that for sunset tonight. I'm knackered. Almost there though, I can see the wall. I'll load up Met Office, check the wind gust speed and uh, try and find a pitch. One minute after telling you I might need that pitch down the slope, I've reached the summit already. And look at this. Definitely won't be needing that one. This is perfect. Flat, thick, dry grass, very few rocks. This stone wall runs all the way along the ridge. As far as my eye can see, I'm not sure what's behind there, but I think the summit is that way. Maybe there's a chance of a stream down there, but this is perfect, absolutely perfect. Wind protection from the wall, flat ground, beautiful views. No wind, excellent. I've reached the, the ridge to the summit. 
about here and I walk on another couple of hundred meters until I hit a T-junction in the walls that's the summit there at 756 meters I'm on a big wide 300 meter wide plateau of grass but when I hit the summit I'm going to swing a right I'm going to cover those 300 meters to the edge of this plateau near the cliff edge I'm just going to wander along and have a look for this stream my suspicion is that it's going to be too far down uh, in terms of effort or just being too dangerous to get to um, so I might have to just live with the, the water at the lake but um, I'll go and take a look I think I want to be on that side anyway because that side's going to have the best views for sunset and if I pitch up here then it's going to be a few hundred meters that way so we're going to head to the summit cairn and then over to find a stream Ah, uh, I don't know what to do now. I'm in two minds. Firstly, the weather's changed. A load of clouds come in. The wind's picked up a little bit. It's whipping up over Isletha Ridge behind you. And um, it's a little bit cool over there. It's quite welcome, to be honest. But Met Office say there might be a spot of rain if you're unlucky. But uh, whatever. Uh, what I'm in two minds about is the camping spot. So, up on the ridge, the Cletha Ridge, uh, it's, uh, I can see why they call it the slope. It's a big grassy plateau. And although it was a nice walk, it's not that interesting really. So, I want to just find somewhere better to pitch up because I do a lot of my shooting, my photography and videography from where I pitch. And I don't want to be up on the plateau. So I've been stood here for half an hour thinking about a couple of options. Number one is I track back a few hundred meters. I drop down 50 meters to the ledge that we talked about before. And that's going to leave me with cracking views. This view, basically, of Vak and Vard and also sunset out in the distance to Snowdon and everything else, which we've kind of already had, but now we'll have it with running back. In the, in the front. We might lose sunrise. I think we probably will lose sunrise in that position. The other option is, I've just spotted, I don't know if you'll see it on this lens, but down on the left hand side, near Lynn Per Vedai, Per Vedai, maybe. I need some pronunciation help. There's a, there's a cliff edge with a, a ledge it looks like it's got a perfectly flat piece of grass on it. From here, it looks perfect. It's about 200 meters down, so there's a big descent to get to it. And it's perched, it looks, I don't know, it's hard to judge the size, but it looks big enough to pitch a tent. It's overlooking the two Linz and Vak and Vard, which would be good. That would also get a sunset, may even get a sunrise. So I've got two good options. That option I haven't seen, the grass could be terrible, it could be boggy, it could be rocky and when I get there I could be forced with another couple of hundred meter climb that I really don't want to do. Also tomorrow it leaves me with being miles away from my car, my car is way over there, you might just see it, the forest, it's about, it's going to be four miles of walking just to get back to the car and that's over pretty rugged terrain. I don't have to go up back. I can go around the edge, there's a path that goes around the back. But it's still a few miles, and my old, tired knees, ankles, feet and legs, uh, I want to avoid it if I can. So, all that being said, I'm going to backtrack. That ledge that I raved about earlier, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and um, check it out myself. If anyone wants to know uh, where it is, how to get to it, you don't have to go all over Vach to get to it. You can probably find a, a shorter route, which I'll find on the way back tomorrow. So that's it, yeah, done, decided. We're going to backtrack a few hundred metres, drop down the ledge, and we're going to be on that side of the Leather. We're going to look at uh, this beautiful view. Let's go.
campsite number two the spot that I mentioned earlier in the video overlooking both of the Rinogs sunset is going to be over that way sunrise probably just out of sight it's going to be close but uh, a lovely spot lovely views pretty level surface is good not too boggy a little bit damp thick grass there are a couple of rocks in the way if anyone does want to use this site let me know and I can tell you exactly where it is and you're welcome for the rocks that I've moved there's a lovely spot now and I've earned my special treat for climbing two summits in two days it's a knot poodle a chicken and mushroom knot poodle my channel is available for sponsorship deals if anyone wants to send me free snacks I can mention them in the videos whisper golds would be really good other than that any reputable noodle company will do until then it's not poodles cheers steak and liver lamb's liver cooked in butter again I'm a simple person seems to be working I feel pretty good eating like this I think steak is pretty good for you lamb's liver is full of good stuff I think um, yeah anyway sorry lambs wherever they are almost sunset of a couple of hours and this is gonna light up really nicely looking forward to getting a time-lapse on the go doing a bit of filming and then uh, see how we go Peder af. Four bears. Hopefully not. Here. Got your pimp. Should be another nice time lapse. Not sure on that GoPro though. It's pretty old to be fair. It's a Hero 7. The battery's a good few years old, I think. But uh, I had two on vac last night i think they both died after about two hours i was hoping for a bit more i thought the batteries were supposed to last i don't know six hours plus i was hoping it'd go down get a bit of astro and stuff but batteries died pretty early on sunset is uh an hour or so away i'll set that up have a little play with this one Another cracking sunset. How cool was that? I can't recommend this place enough. Being high up in the mountains, looking out to the coast, it's fantastic when the weather's clear. Sky's clear again tonight. There's a little bit of mist forming in some of the valleys. Temperature's already dropped. It's going to be quite a nice night. Do a bit of astrophotography again and then head back tomorrow. I use this lens a lot, you would have seen all these shots. Big 200mm lens, fantastic. It did strike me though, putting the shots together, that there's no wind, there's no people, there's very few animals. I can hear some sheep, but they're, because it's so still, they're a good mile away on the other mountain few crows but no wind and um, I don't want to use music I don't like using music in my videos I like to use the, the footsteps and the ambience and I realized just this afternoon that there's very little going on sometimes when I'm putting a film together and there's not much going on there's always wind the wind's present and I can just let the wind roll through the shots um this time i don't know i don't want to use music that's for sure we'll see how we go might be a lot of silence in it but i quite like that right i'm going to turn in for the night well turn in for a couple of hours uh and then wait back up about 10 o'clock for a bit of astro and i'll see you tomorrow
morning. No sunrise today. We've had a good run. Two very good sunsets and a good sunrise. And then today, I got out at 5.30 and it was all cloudy. Um, so I walked up the hill with the little GoPro. Uh, set that up and that's still up there now. Then I came and got back into my bag in the warm and uh, decided to have an extra hour. Uh, so here we are making a coffee with the jet boil. But unfortunately, I'm running out of gas. Schoolboy error. Uh, and this jet boil flame, which is usually a raging inferno, is now more of a, a candle flame. It's getting there slowly. It's just about warm. I don't think it's going to boil. I think we're out of gas. You can just about hear it now. But that'll be all right. More disappointingly is that I've got a pack of bacon and sausage left for breakfast and no way to heat it. It's a proper schoolboy error. I'll bring a bigger gas bar next time. Here's what it is. I'm going to drink this coffee and then uh, see what it's like outside. Plot a route home. Come on. It's just about to die, I think. I bet this makes a good TV. All packed up, ready to roll the route out of here. He's going to be down the side of Erthletha uh, towards the wall for Runag Vach. And then just before the ascent starts up Vach, there are a few paths that lead off left and right. I'm going to take the first path on the right. And that should take me around that eastern edge of the Runog Vac and I should see the forest open up and it should hopefully become obvious where my car is. It's a good few miles away but I'm hoping uh, that becomes obvious. I'll show you on the map. But first, as this is a behind the scenes, not only have I missed my bacon and sausage due to the gas situation, I've had lukewarm lake water coffee and I've also gone and ripped my trousers Check that out, it's a good one. Right, I'll show you on here. We are currently just here on this northeast edge of Earth Letha. The route back is we're going to drop down towards Llyn Huel again. And then this path here on the right, I'm going to take that. It meets this wall, a wall that leads up to Runagvach. From there, I'm going to take this northeast, a couple of kilometres to the forest. And then from the forest, I'm not sure, we'll see the lay. At this point, we'll be able to look down towards the forest and see the lay of the ground. I don't want to get caught up in the swamp again, obviously. So I'm either going to go back northwest, a bit of a roundabout way but it'll come to that logging road that we're on at the start. Or I can follow the wall round, try and find a shorter route, because parking is here. So just to familiarize everyone with the route, parking was here. We went down through this swampiness, got caught up, ended up taking one of these logging roads up to here, came down, up Rinak Vak. Spent night one on Rinak Vak. Continued south. Stopped at Lin Huel for water. Got back onto this ridge. Continued south up Eithletha. Took the summit ridge route up to the Cairn summit. A very small Cairn summit. Not many rocks to add to it either. 
I then took north, had a look for the stream, couldn't find it. Continued along this path back east, dropped down 50 meters here to campsite number two on day two, this fantastic place that I'm in now. And then uh, from here, back to the car is down here, across here, down there, down there, up here, across there. Looks nice and easy. Let's get going. I just started climbing Renogvach a little bit. The paths aren't exactly clear. So I'm hoping I don't have to ascend too much. I think it's just 50 meters or so and it'll veer off onto the right and then the forest should appear over that way oh. campsite last night is a uh, leather you can see the wall going up that side but if you go right a little bit you see the grassy area there's a little zigzag path and a 50 meter drop from that ridge line is the campsite Obviously, that was the view. Beautiful. Weather has changed. It's got sunny, it's got warm, windy, which is quite welcome. Back to mountain norms of windy weather today, I think. But uh, it's a bit of a relief. Nice, cool, fresh breeze. All right. Follow the wall, turn to right. Speak to you near the forest, hopefully. Forest. My car's in the far corner of that forest. Miles away still. Rather than go cross country, I'm gonna play it safe. I'm gonna walk down the other side of this wall and just follow it all the way down. It hits the T junction, take a left, and that'll lead lead me to this the right hand edge of the forest and then figure it out from there back in the forest down golfing roivheen sikhyaun roivheen heilag yaun dewey weddy blino and Doing Wedi Munhai Regeved, Maheen Hanarar Wediin, Naur Doing Mindadra Dayan Hoil Diachenvar. Thanks. Leave a comment. I appreciate them all. Like and subscribe. Cheers.